Hi everyone, it's Bridget here from Bridget's Kitchen and we have another um, exciting episode of Cook the Books today and on this particular episode of Cook the Books we are doing a recipe straight from my cookbook and I have to say, and I know I say this a lot, but this is one of my absolute favorite recipes. For me, this particular dish and the dish that we're doing today is um, my lamb cutlets, so grilled lamb cutlets with a wonderful uh, curried cauliflower mash, um, which is a really fantastic thing to do to your mash. Um, but the reason why I love this recipe, because seriously, it's like you're eating restaurant quality food, but it's completely and utterly healthy. So I'll show you the, the photo actually from the book, there it is, the photo from the book. Um, and it, you can see it's, it's pretty marvelous. <laughs> it's pretty good, pretty good looking recipe. And you, you, know, you look at that and you're like, are you sure that's healthy? Because that looks like something I could literally, you could eat at a, a very fancy restaurant. Um, and this is in the book. And this is the type of food that you can eat and you can enjoy. So lamb holds a very, you know, close place to my my New Zealand heart. <laughs> I think of a lot of it, you know, you think, uh, you know, please hold the, the sheep jokes for now, but us Kiwis, we do like our lamb. We really, really do. But in saying that as well, we know that the Aussies watching are huge lamb fans as well. The sheep um, in both countries is um, wonderful. And, you know, the flavor is fantastic. And if you're using the right cut of lamb, it can also be a really uh, great way to get something delicious into your diet, but still being, you know, nice and low uh, in fat and really good protein as well. So um, it's in the book, as I was saying, it is on page 103 is my uh, my lamb, but I'm calling it lamb cutlets with onion jam. I forgot about that. Onion jam's pretty good too. Onion jam's fantastic. And curried cauliflower. And it looks like that. So um, it is very exciting. And I think it's one of the reasons why um, this book is almost sold out. So we are about to order the next load of books. The next shipment is about to be ordered um, from our printers because we're almost out of books. And that is so exciting because that officially makes this book uh, a bestseller because we've done that in um, just over a month. We've nearly sold out of all our books. So super exciting um, that we're already at that place when it comes to Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. It's, it's amazing because what it means is that lots of you have a copy of my book and lots of you are enjoying my book and thank you to everyone who's been sending me wonderful photos of them holding the book and if you do get your copy of the book and then you take a photo of yourself holding the book and then you tag Bridget's Kitchen on Facebook, you then go into the draw to win me coming to your house to cook for you. Cook with you? Nah, I'm gonna cook for you this time. So that is a really cool competition. And you've still got a little while, um, if you haven't purchased your copy of your book, you've still got a while to enter as well. So we're gonna keep that competition running for the entire month of May, and you get the chance to win me in your house cooking for you, dinner party styles, straight from the book. So that's pretty exciting. So um, I'll pop a link up to where you can purchase the book, of course, uh, so you can get your copy and be in quick, because we're getting close to nearly towards the end of the copies of the book, it's so exciting. All right, let's get into the recipe. 103 if you are cooking along with me. And um, the first thing that we're gonna, we're gonna think about, or we're gonna talk about, is the lamb. Because that's definitely the most um, vital part of lamb cutlets. I would say you gotta have the right lamb. So a cutlet is, looks like that, of course. You guys all know what a cutlet is. You know, she's not, she's not, he's not. It's not very large, um, but um, what you're getting if you have a look at it, is that particular meat there is lovely and lean. And you can tell it's lean because there's not a lot of marbling going on in there. So this is a lovely piece of lean lamb. Where the fat lies is there on the bone and just around there. So depending on where you're at um, with your diet or with your lifestyle, for some people, like if you're, especially if you're, you're, um, you do the ketogenic diet, there's nothing stopping you from keeping that bit of fat on. If you are doing a gut reset, 
So you're in the middle of a gut reset program. So you're looking at healing your gut and keeping your gut really, really clean, obviously losing some weight at the same time, which is really exciting. Um, you may want to trim that fat off. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna trim up a couple of them just so you can see how easy it is to remove that layer of fat there. And I wanna keep some fat on some of them as well because fat's delicious as well. And as I was saying, you know, we're all at very different places in our journey. And when you um, have finished with your gut reset, because you don't stay on a very low calorie, very almost no fat diet for the rest of your life. That's just not sustainable. Um, once you get into maintenance phase, you're gonna start to include healthy fats back into your diet. And believe it or not, this is a, this is a healthy fat. This is a good fat. Olive oil is a good fat. Um, avocado oil is a good fat, coconut oil is a good fat, all these sort of things you want to start to incorporate back into your diet. So depending on where you are right now, if you're in maintenance, you might decide you want to leave that fat on because one of the things is yes, fat is flavor, hugely important as we know, especially for someone like myself, it's all about the fat, it's all about the flavor. So fat is flavor. But the other thing is that fat helps to keep the meat moist as it's cooking, which is really, really, really important. You also need some fat in your diet because certain um, minerals and uh, vitamins are what are known as fat soluble. So they actually need a little bit of fat in order for our bodies to absorb them, which is also really important. And the other um, really great thing about fat, <laughs> apart from all those other great things that we've already talked about, the other great thing about fat is that fat helps to keep us feeling sated. That means that we feel satisfied, we feel full. So fat is not the enemy that we've all been told for many, many years. You know, government regulations coming out going, you must avoid all the fat, fat is bad, fat is bad, have more carbohydrates. We're finally realizing, finally we're realizing it was not, it was never fat, fat was never the problem. It's actually been the carbs all along. It's the sugar as we know. You know, it's the stuff that our bodies 100% don't need. Our body does not need sugar. So we are saying hey to fat, it's a good thing. But like I said, depending on where you are, if you are right in the middle of your gut reset program and you are actually healing your gut and you are wanting to drop, you know, some weight, then you might want to trim down. So I'm gonna pull the um, pull the camera down onto my bench so you can see what's happening down here. How's that looking? Pretty good. And um, I've got four cutlets in front of me. Now, when you are, if you're, if you're going for weight here, I know it's really hard, but you don't weigh the bone, because unless you eat the bone, you can eat around the bone, but in general, you don't tend to munch on the bone. So the, the part of the meat that you actually want to weigh is that part, if you are weighing your meat, and you literally would just put it on the edge of the scales, just like that, so the bone's hanging off, and you're just gonna weigh your meat there. If you're, like I said, if you're, if you're in your gut reset and you want to make sure you get the right amount of protein in, then that's, what, that's how you would do it. Um, if you are not on a gut reset, then you don't have to bother weighing it too much. You know, visually, you know, that's probably like a portion, three, depending on how big of an eater you are. That is definitely too much. I can already tell you right there, because one of the things about, you know, when we are looking to heal our stomach and we are looking to heal our gut and do all that sort of stuff is that eating too much protein can be a negative too. You want to have more vegetables and moderate amount of protein. So it's nice to make sure that everything we're going to be eating today tastes delicious. All right, so let's get, get trimming. So look at taking, you know, have a little bit of a look at it, see where the fat lies. We can see it's actually just sitting there right on the bone. So it's actually quite easy to go ahead and then to just trim that fat off, just like that. You know, you could um, go even further down here and you could really give it a bit of a clean. But you know what? I'm um, not really wanting to take off too much of that because there's a bit of meat on there. And you know what that means? We can be gnawing away at the bone. So you could like literally keep going and just, just, this just comes off, just like that. Just pull it off. And just give it a little bit of a tug and then the fat will come away. Now, um, once again, it all depends on you how far you actually go with the trimming process. It's completely up to you at the end of the day. So that's kind of quite a clean, now trimmed bit of fat. You could even keep going there. Completely up to you. Right, so that's one. I'll do one more just so you guys can see it all in action. One more. Once again, we're just gonna take it down the bone, get rid of that little bit there. 
If you want to, once again, you can just take that off as well. Completely up to you. And then you've got two trimmed cutlets. These are, this, if you wanted to as well, you could seriously scrape all that off the, the bone as well. And once you've done it at that point, that's called a Frenched cutlet. So that's, uh, I mean, I don't think the French invented the style, but that's what it's called in the um, restaurant trade. We call that Frenching, and that literally means that we go along and we clean the bone till it's just bone visible. But I ain't gonna waste all that, that, that meat, no way, no way. Because one of the things about lamb, and I think the reason why we want to get it right, is because it's really expensive. It's not the cheapest cut, so this is definitely, you know, something you might want to think about for Mother's Day, actually, because it's one of those dishes that you want to get right, because it is, it is a little bit more expensive um, to buy lamb, and definitely trim your own, because it's cheaper to buy um, the lamb with this little bit of, of fat on here, and you see, I didn't take off that much, than to buy already trimmed lamb. It will cost you an extra sometimes 10 to $12 a kilo more, and you saw how quick it is for me to do. So you don't have to worry about that at all. So I've got my air fryer on. Let me just, there he is. Hi, Mr. Air Fryer. Got my air fryer on. You can cook the lamb in the air fryer, or you can cook it under the grill. So when I talk about under the grill, what I'm referring to when it comes to the grill is I'm referring um, to top heat um, for our American... Um, visitors here today on, on in the class um, I think you call it a broiler so that's top heat you can absolutely do that and the reason why I'm cooking the lamb uh, either using the grill the top heat or putting it into the air fryer is because we're holding we're going to put it on a rack and then the fat gets the opportunity to drip away so once again we're thinking about you know reducing the amount of fat we don't want to I don't want to cook this in a frying pan because I don't want it to be sitting in its own fat as it's cooking if you've got a grill on your barbecue so the grill bars 100% you can do that on there as well because once again the fat is just going to drip away and it's not going to be sort of cooking inside of it which is really important so my air fryer I have on sitting on 200 degrees I'm just going to adjust the time on it you're probably thinking why is she doing the lamb first because everything else is kind of pretty quick pretty quick as well so that's why I'm going to do the lamb first uh, so I'm going to set the time doesn't need much there's not a lot of meat to cook I'm going to start it off at five minutes, uh, six minutes, and see how we go. But like I said, it does not need much time. So we're going to add a bit of flavor to our lamb now because we want to make sure we get it right. And this is actually um, my oil-free pesto that I made yesterday. If you joined me yesterday for a quick little cooking class, it was a very impromptu one considering that I found this wonderful basil at the supermarket and I just had to use it. I couldn't turn it down. I made some pesto and I put a bit of rocket into my pesto as well. So it's even gone a little bit further from being a pesto and now I would like to think it's more of a salsa verde. Salsa verde basically means green sauce. So I've got um, parsley in here, I've got rocket, I've got basil and as I was saying I did the, a quick little class on making the sauce yesterday. You can go back onto my page Bridget's Kitchen on Facebook and you will find the video um, still sitting up there. So I've just put a little bit of that salsa verde or that oil free pesto onto my lamb, just onto the meat part of it. I'm just gonna rub it in a little bit and now that I've got that on there just a little bit of seasoning a little bit of salt goes on Himalayan salt um, of course and a little bit of black pepper it's up to you um, if you want to use black pepper. I know I say that all the time because some people don't like it. And I think the person who doesn't like it in our house is our 14 year old son. He's like, is there any pepper in there? He finds it too spicy. But you know what? I love the balance of what we've got going on here. So air fryer is nice and hot. Remember, you always preheat your air fryer before you stick anything in. I've got a little grill. I'll show you guys a little grill here. So the meat is actually going to go Oh, You know what? I'll put straight onto here. Can you hear the sizzle? You know it's nice and hot, right? You know it's nice and hot when you hear that little wonderful sizzle happening. So the grill goes back into the air fryer. And I'll say, does it need much? Probably only needs like your five minutes maximum. Because one of the things about the beauty of lamb as well is that it is really wonderful if it's cooked pink as opposed to well done. You know, well done, you know, not too exciting. All right, so lamb is in. We're gonna leave that on there. The other part of the puzzle um, when it comes to this recipe is the cauliflower mash. So here is my cauliflower 
and um, what you would normally do, and, and I'll, there's a couple little little um, tips on how you can make sure that your cauliflower mash is really, really creamy. So I'm just going to run you through those tips really quickly. So uh, number one is that um, rather than yeah, normally, I mean, I think for some of us, and, and I, I used to be part of this this um, way of thinking, is that you break off the florets and then you pop them into the water and you start boiling them. Well, as you can see, all the florets are different size. So this is going to cook a lot faster than this because this is huge. So what you're going to get when, it's, when the cooking time is up is you're going to get some that are real mushy and waterlogged and you're going to get some that are only just cooked. So um, the best way to do it that I find when it comes to making a nice creamy cauliflower mash, which is 100% what we want is a nice creamy cauliflower mash, is to take up your, um, your cauliflower, keeping it whole, obviously this is just a little piece of cauliflower now, and then instead of breaking off the florets, you just slice it through. And what you end up with is very even slices. So this is gonna cook really, really evenly. And it's gonna help so much to give us a smooth mash, which is exactly 100% what we want. We want it to be smooth and creamy. So that's, what, that's the best way, it's my best advice. If you've had cauliflower mash in the past, you've gone, Ah, don't know what happened there. <laughs> bit lumpy or a bit too waterlogged. This is a great little secret. So it goes into the pot, and then you just um, have enough water in here to just cover the cauliflower. You don't have to have you know liters and liters of water boiling away there. You treat this very much like making mashed potatoes. Um, you just cover it with water. Of course, we put a sprinkle of Himalayan salt goes in there, and then I normally cook this sort of size cauliflower once it comes to the boil it takes about 12 minutes to get down to the texture or the, the cooked texture that we're after so i've got one on the oops oopsie oopsie don't want to use that one again i've got some on the stove already that's been bubbling away there he is been bubbling away and and the best way to tell whether your cauliflower mash is ready to be mashed is take yourself up a fork and just see if you're able to mash it with your fork. If it, if it doesn't give you any resistance and you're able to get a good mash, then you know it's ready. So the next stage is to ensure creamy, creamy mash, which is what we want, is to drain it. Now, <laughs> there are a couple types of, you know, drainers, I think. And I'm talking about people. There are drainers who um, use a sieve or a colander or whatever you, you know something with holes in it and then you tip the whole pot in and there's other drainers that stand there with the pot and then they get a knife or a pot lid and they do that let me just um please advise do not be this type of drainer because what happens when you're doing this is sure you're going to get out some of the water but there is absolutely no way you're going to get out all the water plus it's dangerous and you might burn yourself or in this case cut yourself please be this type of drainer. Remember we want creamy cauliflower mash. So put it into the colander or the sieve or whatever it is you're using. I'm actually using a, um, a container that my ricotta comes in, which actually comes in really, really handy uh, for this type of, of thing. And you notice I'm shaking it. I am allowing the water to come out. You could even leave it sitting there for a, you know, a minute or two just to make sure that um, you've really got the, the drainage working there. So I'm going to grab myself a paper towel, one second. Can't stand messy benches. It really bugs me. I don't have a tea towel here in the kitchen, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to paper towel it. And maybe it's the chef thing, but I'm just like, ah, oh, messy benches. It's, my, it's one of my OCDs. It's like messy fridges. Oh, I cannot stand a messy fridge even though mine does get messy on occasions. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is to clean out a messy fridge and put everything in containers and label them. <laughs> I think it's a shit thing as well. All right, that talking has meant that our cauliflower has drained really nicely, but even still, a little bit of a shake shake. You definitely want to do it while it's warm as well, because that's going to, if, if you let it cool down too much, you're not going to get as creamy a texture. I know it seems like I'm spending a lot of time on this, but I want creamy mash. I really like creamy mash. <laughs> All right, that's our air fryer. Beeping away there. I might just give him just a couple more minutes. Just maybe one more minute. I feel that it, it could do with one more minute. All right, and we're gonna put it on to the grill function. 
It's got a grill fun function on this. It's, it's a pretty cool little machine, even though it's really difficult to use. All right, I'm gonna start her up again. Okay, lovely. That is what we want. I'm then going to pop this straight into my second favorite uh, bit of equipment, which is my little food processor. I love this so much. Love it, love it, love it. Someone's just saying they steam their cauliflower. Absolutely, if that makes you happy, steam your cauliflower. I just grab a pot and I do this, but steaming is wonderful as well. Cauliflower's in there. We now need to add the flavors. So the flavors that we're adding today is gonna to be a little bit of roast garlic, and I roasted this garlic. Look at that. I roasted the garlic in the air fryer. In the air fryer. God, I love air fryers. But it's, it's just wonderful, and it's just freshly roasted too, so it's still a little bit warm. You don't have to have freshly roasted garlic. You can have your garlic, oh, that one's a bit hard. Oh, I want a soft one. You can have your garlic um, pre-roasted in and, and the fridge, and I do have a uh, recipe for that in the cookbook as well, as well as this is in the cookbook too. Everything's in the cookbook, so roasted garlic goes in. We're doing curried cauliflower, so we need to start adding some spices. So the spices that I've got today, of course, is um, a curry uh, powder itself, which is a mixture of different spices. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of that. In the book, I think I've got quantities for two portions. So um, I probably don't have quite enough cauliflower for two portions, but that's okay. <laughs> this is just all pretend, isn't it? <laughs> Bit of turmeric goes in as well. That's gonna give us that wonderful flavor, uh, wonderful color. And the last thing I'm going to add is another type of, of, of um, spice mix, which is garam masala. Love this stuff so much. It's going to give such a good flavor to our uh, cauliflower as well. I'm going to check on my air fryer. Oh, it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to leave that up to cool down. Leave it up to cool down. We're going to finish this off. My little lid goes on. Oh, oh, nearly forgot. Cannot forget a little bit of seasoning. Remember, as I was saying yesterday in yesterday's live video, salt isn't just about making things salty. Salt helps our palate to detect flavors. Think about you know having a tomato, just eating a, a cherry tomato on its own, nothing else. Pop that cherry tomato in your mouth. Now think about having the same cherry tomato sliced in half and sprinkled with a little bit of salt. Already you know that that cherry tomato is going to taste so much better than the one that has got no salt on it whatsoever. So um, yes, yeah, salts are, I think it's, the, it's one of the key differences, but um, the key differences between people who cook professionally and people who cook at home. We actually do use quite a, a, a decent amount of salt in our food. Um, but you know, you don't want to add too much, especially if you are on a gut reset. So when you are adding salt, make sure it's a good quality salt. We use Himalayan because it's got lots of trace elements. But also, um, I find that with the Himalayan, I don't have to add as much because it's got a really lovely flavor. So in there it goes. Just going to give it a little bit of a, a bit of a blast here in the machine. Uh, loud noise coming. so smooth it's just wonderful gotta have a taste gotta have a taste you gotta know what's going on oh, I could literally eat the whole thing on its own just like that that's wonderful look you can this is such a great little recipe with this little curry cauliflower you can have it with everything if you if you are you know having cauliflower as part of your dinner or your lunch just add some spices, add a bit of roast garlic, and it completely transforms your cauliflower into something really quite, quite delicious. So that is looking pretty good. All we need to do now is I'm gonna talk you through very briefly the onion jam portion. And the onion jam portion is very, very easy to do. So I um, sliced up onions, I put them into my nonstick wok here with um, a little bit of tamari, just a little bit of tamari fried it off for a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes then I added some kombu water and I basically let that cook down into the kombu water it had all disappeared and what you are left with is this wonderful caramelized onions and they are fabulous you can um you don't even need to add any salt because we've got the tamari in there so no salt required but the only other thing I'm going to add into it 
as I have a little bit of um, fresh thyme here. So I'm just going to pick off some thyme leaves because these are just glory and the smell is wonderful. Some of these fresh thyme, and they're baby baby thyme, so I'm not even going to bother to chop it up. I'm just going to pick off the leaves. I love thyme. It reminds me of Christmas because my, um, my auntie and my cousin, they always make a most wonderful um, stuffing <laughs> with thyme. It's always got the most beautiful thyme in it. It's fresh thyme that they use, not dried thyme. And it, is just, it just reminds me of Christmas. Every time I smell this, I think about my auntie and I think about that wonderful stuffing that she makes, which is, yes, gluten and yes, butter, lots of butter. But the smell of this fresh thyme is just, oh, it's just phenomenal. Isn't that what's so good about food is that a certain smell can remind you of a, of a time and a place instantaneously. You smell something, you oh, reminds you of your grandma, reminds you of your auntie, reminds you of a moment when you're with someone eating something. It's just um, such a great sort of pivotal moment when I smell this time and I think about my auntie. So that's in there. That is done. We just need to plate up. So, plating up is exciting. Do I have the same plate from the book available? Oh, you know what? It's in, the, it's in, my, um, in my storage area. I don't have the same plate. I'm going to have to put it onto a different plate, but that's okay. We're going to put it onto a different plate today. It would have been nice if I'd had the actual plate that I used to, um, in the, but it's, it literally is a couple minutes walk that way so we're not going to bother with that today we're going to do it like this so the first thing you want to do remember we're trying to get restaurant quality here so we're going to spoon our mash on I, I, I don't think you need to do it with a teaspoon it was just the closest thing i had was the um was this the teaspoon so the mash goes on first down the bottom remember restaurant quality we're doing this restaurant quality style so it's restaurant quality, which also means that Bridget gets out her paper towel, or her t if she had a clean tea towel, and she starts to uh, manically wipe the edges of the plates. I do this, doesn't matter who I'm feeding, whether I'm feeding, you know, a two-year-old niece, or my husband, or someone who's coming to, you know, to eat at my house. I always clean plates. It's one of those, once again, it's one of those chef habits. So that is now the base. We have the base ready to go. Let's look at these little lamb that we have here. Oh gosh, isn't that wonderful? So let's um, get all fancy with it, shall we? Let's get all fancy. Oh yeah. Squishing it down. You'll notice that I'm actually, oh wow, look at that. Okay, lamb is on. Fantastic. The next thing that we need to add, and this is, this is so almost ready. And yes, I kind of want to put my hands into it, but I better not because it's a bit hot. Um, is our fried caramelized onion jam that we did in our kombu. Oh, goodness me, would you look at that? That is very exciting. If you want to get even more fancy than that, and why wouldn't you? Because yum, <laughs> fancy is good, and you know we eat with our eyes. Is I've got my, my little um, damp tea towel of my herbs as well. So you can, and remember, what goes really, really well with lamb? Mint. So, once again, to give us a little bit of flavor, to make us feel a little bit fancy, and this is why I did this recipe today, because I thought, what a great, um, if, you're, if you're considering what to cook tomorrow for Mother's Day, or what to cook for yourself if you are a mother, or if you're, you're feeding a mother, or you're doing something with the family, or if you're the mum, maybe you can suggest that this is what they're going to cook, people should be cooking for you. Because it is just such a cute little dish. And you see it's not hard. It's just three components, but three delicious components. And then we have this marvellous, marvellous, marvellous dish. Just like that. <laughs> fantastic, right? It is fantastic. You could, of course, bling, 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 a little bit of pepper if you want to. But, you know, I just think it's just fabulous like that. Um, chances are... The people that are at home today are going to start to fight over that. I may not even get an opportunity to, <laughs> to photograph it. I'm hoping I do. But that is the dish. And remember, it's on page 103 of the cookbook. <laughs> and it is, as, as fancy as it looks, is as good as it tastes. It is an absolute winner. You know, 
make sure you know you cook those you're gonna love these onions you can put these onions on so many different things that mash base can be done with so many different things as well think of it just with chicken you know curry cauliflower with chicken or with beef or you know this can be a wonderful base for seafood as well so you've got all these elements here the best way to cook your lamb is to you know, just just to air on the side of caution doesn't need much time we want to be a little bit pink inside our onion jam there which is so easy to make and once again a very very versatile dish so there you go guys i'm going to sign off i'm going to say goodbye <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day for tomorrow or for Sunday if you are, the next following day if you are watching us from um, the other side of the world. Um, to all the people who are going to be looking after their mums, give it a good go. This might be something you're interested in doing as well. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I um, really hope that you enjoy your weekend, enjoy your Mother's Day, and we'll see you guys again really, really soon. By the way, I won't be... Shall I post a recipe up tomorrow? I was thinking about having a, a non-recipe day tomorrow, but I would actually really like to share my turmeric crackers with you guys. I think I'll do that. So I'll be sharing tomorrow on Bridget's Kitchen on Facebook. I'll be sharing my amazing recipe for turmeric crackers. Really good for inflammation as well. So there you go, guys. Really great to see you all. Thank you for everyone who's joined me um, today. And we'll um, see you online really soon. Take care. Bye.